When it comes to editing video faster, two skills that you really need are organization and muscle memory. So today's tip will really help you out with those skills and it's not something you can really learn from a manual either. That's because today I'm going to show you a workflow that's as old as the chem flatbed editing machine from the 1930s, but it's still used on almost everything that you see in movies and on TV by professional editors because it still works so great. So let's dive in and learn why you should consider cutting your next video using select string outs using only the keyboard in DaVinci Resolve 17 with no stacked pancakes required. That's an insider editing joke. Uh, it's actually a real technique, it's just not as good as this tip I'm gonna show you today. In order to do this magic of editing from one timeline to another timeline, you first need to organize your project, your, your bins based off location, uh, scene, sort of like I've done right here. And the quickest way to get these onto timelines is first to go into, make sure your clips have no in and out marks on them, clear those with option X, um, I've already done that. Um, that way you make sure you get every single frame on your timeline. And the quickest way to make the timeline is to select them all with Command A. And if you're on a PC, you know, do the math. I think it's Control. Uh, and then right click and say Create New Timeline Using Selected Clips. Okay, when you do that, it gives you the option to say Audio Track Type Based on Selected Media. That's why I like doing it this way is because it, you are automatically getting it uh, set correctly right off the bat. And you don't have to go change your audio track types later on. Um, so good little tip there. We're gonna call this Sand Dunes Hike is the name of the sequence. And just like that, we have all the clips that were in that bin are on one timeline that's 30 some minutes long. And I'm gonna organize it by dragging into my string outs bin, which has all of uh, my footage for this project all laid out into these nice string outs. Now, uh, the way or the magic behind this whole process I'm gonna show you today is it's under the timeline menu and it's called swap timeline and source viewer, okay? And what this is going to do is instead of like loading a clip into the source and editing that to a timeline, which you can do and you can swap between the two with Q, we're going to be using command page up. And actually, I'm going to show you a shortcut that I like to use instead of that uh, to quickly edit from one timeline to another timeline. And so, for instance, we have this, this timeline right here. I can load this into source by clicking and dragging. And now if I use command page up, I can get to my other timeline really quickly and I could even mark a clip on it with X, go to the other timeline and hit shift F12, which will throw it at the end of the timeline. However, a couple things here pointed out, this created a compound clip. So there's a couple other setup things that I want to show you so that you don't have to be editing compound clips into other timelines because that gets messy and you can't edit with them right away that way. So I'm going to hit command Z. And we are going to go up to uh, the edit menu. And at the, down here at the bottom of the edit menu, there's a button called or a checkbox for decompose compound clips on edit. You check that and it, we just checked it. You could see now when I do an edit from one timeline to the other, if I hit X to mark a clip, I hit command page up to go to the other timeline. And I'm going to clear my marks here, clear my marks <laughs> with, uh, with option X. And I'm going to edit this to the end of the timeline this time with Shift F12, which is a pen edit, by the way. Uh, now we can see we have the actual clip and not a compound clip. The other thing I was going to point out is uh, you saw me drag a sequence from over here in this media pool to the source. And I said, we're going to do this with no mouse. And, uh, and we are. So the way we're going to do that is with Command 1, Command 2, and Return. So just a really a couple really easy shortcuts to learn so command one takes us to our folders okay which we can't see but it basically i'm showing you with the mouse it's this area over here that is now active because i hit command one i can go up down i can even close things with the left and right arrows but i can't get across the clips how do i get to the clips that's command two so command two takes us to the clips and I can load any of those in and then to load them into source uh, is with the return button on the keyboard. So that's basically how you get them all loaded. Now it's command page up, toggles between the two, super, super easy. Now we can use our simple three point editing. Uh, two other things I'm gonna show you in the setup part of this video that I like to do that makes everything easier is instead of using command page up because it takes two hands to do that command, I like to change it to F1, I think is the best shortcut. That's what I like to use for it. So the way you can set this um, timeline, swap timeline and source viewer to be F1 is you go to the keyboard customization area right up here. 
And then you can search for swap timeline and source. And I actually, I had already set this earlier, but you would just hit the plus button right here and you could type in F1. And then uh, you can use F1 instead of having to hit command page up. So that's, that's a nice handy way to get between the two. That's what I'm used to from Avid Media Composer. One more optional thing for setup, and I know it's a lot of setup, but it's you just need to know this for the first time, is over here on the right, there's an option called Stacked Timelines. So if you choose this, and then right here, there's this button right here, it's called Stacked Timelines. What this does is actually tabs out your timelines initially. So you could actually see a little bit more clearly down in this area, which ones you're toggling between. So I'm gonna hit F1, which swaps timeline and source, and you can see whatever one is uh, that has that orange, that's the one that's active, that's the one that you can mark in and out points on, or that's the one that you're gonna edit to. Now that the setup's out of the way, let's get to editing, because that's the fun part, right? Um, here's how we're gonna edit from timeline to timeline. I've got an empty new clean one down here, but let's use the string outs that we've created to edit and do some three-point editing with insert, overwrite, and append to end. Those are the commands I'm going to show you. So to get to our string outs, we're going to go hit uh, command one that takes us up to our folders and command two takes us across to our string outs. I'm going to open up the time-lapse bin or string out a folder of clips with return and we can't see it yet. That's because we haven't swapped timeline and source yet. So hit F1 because we programmed that into our keyboard shortcuts and we can see some uh, time-lapse uh, footage right here. I'm going to mark it in with I, go to the end of it, mark an O with O and then hit F1 to get us back to the other timeline. And we could do whatever we want to get it down there. Let's do the good old append at N, which is shift F12. If there was lots of footage on here, it would have thrown it at the end of the sequence because there's nothing there. It just puts it there. Let's go quickly back and grab another time lapse that we like. Maybe we use this one right here. You can mark the entire one actually quickly with X. That gives us that whole shot and then F1 to get back to here. And let's say we want this one to go right at the beginning and we want that other clip to get pushed out of the way, we would use insert edit, which is F9. Okay, so we've learned inserts F9, append to end is shift F12. And um, why don't I show you uh, overwrite? Overwrite's another grid one to know too. So go back up here, uh, command two gets us to, let's say another, uh, string out, we're gonna go to the sand dunes uh, hike one, and I'm gonna hit F1, that calls that up as a timeline that's separate. Shift Z to see everything down there. This is a really cool shot of the sand dunes with my kids. Okay, we're gonna mark it in and out, and then we're gonna go back to the timeline that we were just in. And if we want to overwrite that, which it's gonna take, um, it's basically going to slop it right on top of those other clips. We want it to happen. We've got two marks picked on here. So this is three point editing and in and out there. And the in point here marks as the third point of the, um, three point edit and overwrite is F10. F10. We've got that other clip down there on the timeline. Okay. So we've quickly been able to pull from a couple different string outs, a couple different timelines into this one creative sequence just like that. And we're using F1 to jump between the two. So you can you could probably ask yourself right now, well, this seems a lot like if I go to the cut page with shift three, it seems a whole lot like the same thing as if I was inside of one of these bins here and using source tape where everything is being pulled up at the same time from that bin. And actually, it, it actually is, it's it's exactly the same. The advantage that you're gonna get from editing timeline to timeline in the edit page versus doing the cut page is these are actual timelines that you can organize however you want. So like within this timeline uh, bin right here, you can see if I hit option X, I've split up, this is a GoPro time-lapse with a A7 III time-lapse. You can organize this however you want. You can trim these however you want before you start to work with them. So you could basically take all your footage and then make a selects timeline that is like the trim down best of it, and then edit from the selects timeline into your actual timeline. So it's going from timeline to timeline to timeline taking a big mass amount of amount of footage into something that's much more smaller manageable and then finally into something that's creative that has music and dialogue and really tells a story 
So that's one reason that I really like using selects timelines or chem rolls. And you can also, another thing you can do with these is you could put marks on them. So, you know, if you go through here and I, I want to identify something, if you hit uh, command M, that pulls up your markers uh, window with, you could add descriptions and you could jump around with markers in there as well. And now that you understand how to edit from timeline to timeline, you might be curious, do I even need to use this uh, swap timeline and source viewer command? And the answer is, hey guys, real quick timeout because I wanna welcome you here to Creative Video Tips if you're new. I'm Chadwick and this channel is all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. Lately, we've been working through a lot of great DaVinci Resolve power tips. So if you're into that, please subscribe right now down below, it's free, there's no content and it might even help grow this community. But more importantly, that way you don't miss out on next week's great tip if you hit the bell. Oh, and the answer to if you really need to use the swap timeline and source viewer command, the answer is no, but it depends on how much you need to see. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the advantage of using swap timeline and source viewer is you get to see your whole timeline strung out like as a whole timeline instead of it all being crammed into just the monitor. So for instance, let me show you what I'm talking about. If we just wanted to load something into source, a timeline into source, you can do that. So I'm gonna hit command two to get us to these clips up here. And let's load this Zapata Falls in. I'm actually navigating this um, as a source timeline and I it's jumping between the beginning of each clip. You could even do this with markers and jump between markers. But what if I just wanted to mark part of a clip on here? I could totally do that by just using I and then O, but I can't see the, the timeline down here in this section. But I can edit this straight to any old sequence because it's in source. So if I wanted this to go to the end of my sequence, I could hit Shift F12 and that'll append it straight on down to there. The advantage that I love so much about swap timeline uh, source or swap timeline, whatever it's called, you get the idea, is and now I can see the whole timeline of everything at once. So instead of it sort of just being sort of masqueraded or disguised up there in the uh, in the source monitor in this window up here, I'm able to see the whole timeline of all my clips at once. So th that's the answer to that. You don't have to use swap timeline and source to edit timeline to timeline. Um, it just, it's nice because you can actually see everything there at once. The other thing is uh, you don't actually need to have stacked timelines on. That's another thing I showed you at the beginning of this for setup. Um, because it nicely shows you if I toggle between the two with F1, it shows you which one is active. But if you turn this off, the stack timelines off, it's still, if you use F1, it takes you between the two timelines. It's just a little bit more confusing, I think, as you're first learning and understanding how what's happening here. So I wanted to make sure that was on so that was clear. So make sure you ask me any questions in the comments if anything is unclear with this. I, I had this as part of one of my advanced unknown tricks videos and got a lot of questions because it is a little bit confusing. Uh, it's it's fairly advanced, but once you get the hang of it, you can fly through edits so quickly because you have access to you know, every single clip from a specific scene to go into another scene like like instantly. It's so, so freaking cool. And now you know how the pros stay organized to edit down a big pile of footage into a work of art by cutting source timelines into program timelines with simple three-point edits using only the keyboard. If this method was new to you, give the video a like and you're in luck because there should be a playlist of other great DaVinci Resolve tutorials popping up right now. So I'll see you over in that next one.